All right. Good. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the penultimate uh, session for the conference. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Garth Kong, and he's graciously said that you can interrupt him with questions. However, his his talk will be rather quick, so if it's a lengthy question, maybe hold it to the end. There'll be plenty of time. Um, take it away. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, am I good to go? All right. Uh, hello, every, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Garth, and today we'll be replicating the uh, interactive uh, flow cytometry workflow in SightSeq today. Um, so without further ado, let's just get started. So for today's presentation, I want to go over um, several things. Uh, first, like give you a background of uh, SiteViz, uh, for example, what is SiteSeq, what are blood cells, um, what is flow cytometry, and about SiteViz, like what it is, um, why would you use it, and when to use this. And during the uh, demo, I'll be showing uh, one layer gates, um, two layer gates, something we call a back gate, and how you can use those uh, gating schemes to help inform further differential um, analysis, like uh, or further analysis, such as differential expression. Uh -huh. And then lastly, I'll show you how, to, how you can get the code, how you can get the data, the presentation, and everything. So uh, what exactly is um, SiteSeq? Uh, in summary, it's uh, single-cell RNA-seq uh, plus your um, sur cell surface proteins. And this is achieved using something called antibody-derived tags, or uh, ADT for short. And what they are are um, uh, antibodies that, are, that have like, DNA barcodes on them and these DNA barcodes have poly A tails on them. And in the normal experiment, you would introduce these ADTs to your cells. They'll um, bind to the cell surface proteins and get kind of carried through the 10x uh, droplet sequencing uh, platform. And when the, when the cells are lysed in the droplets, in the oil droplets, uh, the poly A's from your mRNA as well as your ADTs uh, hybridize to the poly T um, groups in your beads. And then with further processing, you get uh, two sequenceable libraries. So one um, for your transcriptome and one for your uh, proteins. So on the data end, you get a matrix that's a RNA by cells and a ADT by cells. And generally, why we need these uh, surface protein markers is they help classify uh, cell types. So in this example, um, I'll be using like uh, cells from the from the uh, human blood cell lineage. And, and also for a little bit of background information, each cell type uh, usually express a specific profile of um, surface protein markers. And um, so flow cytometry, uh, on the other hand, is already a proven method to help classify cells using the self-surface protein markers. And so how these work is um, you kind of quantify the cell surface proteins and then you gate them in two dimensions. So for example, we have CD34 on the x-axis and CD38 on the y-axis. And to get to certain, um, to get to certain populations of cells, for example, like uh, the stem cells, you would uh, kind of draw, you would do this iterative filtering called gating. So in this example, if we filter for these cells, these are CD34 positive, 
38 negative cells. And then we take this subset of cells and then replot them uh, using CD45 RA and CD90. And over here is our uh, stem cell population. So these are, we would call these uh, 45 RA negative cells and CD90 positive. So how this relates to the previous slide is we would, we would kind of like follow this path that we've made, uh, 34 positive, 34 negative, and then walk this path to uh, CD90 positive, 45 RA. And then for common lymphoid progenitors, the CLPs, we would take a different path. So 34 positive, 38 positive, uh, replot it using these features, and then use that to label this cell population, and so on for a common myeloid progenitor, which are over here. So in the CMPs, we take this one extra path right here. Um, so so when, when we were um, developing SiteViz, uh, we thought that um, if we can replicate the uh, flow cytometry workflow um, in SiteSeq, then we can provide researchers more methods to help classify their cell clusters. Um, and for the technical um, distillation of the question, it's can we build an interactive gating program in SiteSeq using the R-Shiny platform? And we want to do this because we want to relate um, everything in antibody space. So on the left, we have a CD4 versus CD8, and then relate uh, your cells in antibody space to dimension reduction space. Um, so there's a couple of reasons of why we, why we developed SiteViz. Um, we found it extremely useful that it helps, uh, you know, wet lab biologists leverage their um, uh, knowledge of flow cytometry and applying it to uh, single cell data sets. And uh, users can also like, um, it'll help you do more rapid uh, data exploration um, because the alternative is kind of, is, is kind of painful because you have to draw like four borders. So like, yeah, you draw the bottom border, you jitter it around top border, jitter it around left and right border. You take those cells and then you replot it again. So the alternative is pretty painful. Um, and we thought that, you know, drawing physical gates can get us much farther. Oh, I have a question. Cyclists can help uh, for DDMC data set. Uh, yes, uh, in this in this presentation, we apply it to PBMC. Okay. Yep. And lastly, we understand that these multi-omic single cell data sets, uh, they can be difficult to generate, but also difficult to analyze. So we are uh, doing our part to make the analysis a little bit more accessible to wet lab biologists and ultimately really to help the users um, help them facilitate their like novel hypothesis generation to uh, to get to novel discoveries faster. And so uh, when would you actually use SiteViz? So um, let's say you finished um, an experiment, you do your library preparation, you do uh, like bioinformatic processing, and you get out a processed um, Surat data set, like an RDS. And, and then we find it uh, very useful because SiteViz kind of unites uh, the bench scientist and the computational uh, scientists um, together. It's not like a, you throw it to the bench scientists and they're like happily gate. Um, <laughs> uh, like so we find like, um, SiteViz is best when used with uh, both parties. And, and ultimately, yeah, that's all that's to help us 
get to the novel discoveries faster. So uh, for today's um, example data set is a PBMC data set with eight patients and three time points. Um, it's integrated using the weightest nearest neighbor um, algorithm with a total of 160,000 cells and 228 antibodies. And for today's presentation, we've subsampled it down to 10,000 cells, but we're just going to keep the 228 antibodies. All right, so what I'm going to do here is head on over to head on over, over to the orchestra workshop. I'm going to import SiteViz and I'm going to run it. And uh, what I'm uploading now is a processed um, PBMC data in RDS format. And this is the one with 10,000 cells. Uh, let it upload, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to head on over to the gating page. All right, so for our first example, I'm going to start drawing some one layer gates and uh, we're going to go for B cells. Um, so one of those features is uh, CD27. And for the right now, I'm choosing my Y axis feature and that's going to be um, IGD. CD27. And so, uh, so now I've drawn my gates. Um, right now, what I can do is hover over that um, this feature scatter plot and then select my cells. And immediately we'll see those cells um, reflected over onto the dimension reduction space. And this is really useful because you can do this multiple times and see like, and kind of like help fine tune your gates. So let's go ahead and just select uh, this and then we'll give it a title, B cells, and then we'll hit the gate button. And then what happens is um, we've captured all those cells uh, within this gate. So we started off with 10,000 cells. We ended up with 575 cells. Okay. And so that was uh, one example of a uh, one layer gate. Oh, and then if you scroll it down to the bottom, you can hit a download so that you can capture all the cell barcodes that you've you've gated. Um, so I'm going to give you a, another example of a one layer gate. Uh, right now we are going to be getting for natural killer cells here. And one of the features uh, is CD4. And the Y feature, we're going to go for CD56. And again, we are going to create our selection. And we see that a majority of these cells located in the natural killer cluster. And so we're going to go ahead and give this gate a, a label and then hit the gate button again. Great. Um, 
All right, so what I've shown is a two examples of a one layer gate. Um, and now I'm going to take a detour and try to um, download those two gate informations and then take all their cell barcodes and do a differential expression analysis. So it can be as easy as importing Surat. I am importing the 10,000 PBMC cells. And then I'm going to read a like the B cells um, RDS gate. So B gate and K gate. And, and I want to show that for this uh, specific class, it's uh, rich with like metadata. So, like for example, um, the number of gates that was used, what your assay was, what the input cells for that um, for that gate, what are the output cells, what was your x-axis, what was your y-axis, what are the coordinates of the gate that gate that you drew. Um, and then a list of like uh, simple uh, statistics here. All right, so, and then to get your cell barcodes, it's as simple as bgate dollar gate one subset cells. And there are your uh, cell barcodes for the B cells. So let's go ahead and get those. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm making sure there's no um, overlapping cells between the two gates. Uh, sometimes, um, like these gates aren't entirely perfect. So what I'm trying to do is just like make sure one cell doesn't appear in two gates. And then we can run a find markers comparing uh, B cells to and K cells. Then I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and view the output. Um, and now uh, we can, we can uh, do a sanity check here. So MS4A1, that's the top differential gene, um, oops, MS4A1, and then, so this gene should be um, up, highly upregulated in the B cells, and so is that true? Um, yep, I, I buy that one, and then, and then for the others, for the flip side, uh, this this gene should be upregulated in in the uh, natural killer cells. Yep. So yep, it's uh, enriched in the NK cells as well, compared to the B cells. Great. Um, so, so that was a, that was an example of like how you would use um, these gates metadata to help facilitate further uh, downstream analysis. So, uh, in this case, it was um, just simple differential expression. Right. I'm going to reopen the app. Re-upload my ten thousand. PBMC cells, and and in this example, I'm going to give a uh, an example of a two layer gate. Um, and this time, we're going to be selecting for um, the CD8 positive T cells. Um, let's see. Oh, 
OK. Um, all right, so for the first gate, um, the first gate kind of selects for cells that are in the lymphoid side of the family of uh, these blood cell lineages. So let's go for this uh, CD11B and CD45. And I'm going to go ahead and select this cluster here. And, and so we see um, we've captured like all the lymphoid family of, of, this, of the blood cell lineage, but we also have some bleed over from in, into the myeloid cells as well. And, and so these gates aren't always black and white, but our next filter should um, really clean up the cells. So let's call this lymphoid and myeloid cells. We're going to hit the gate button. And then we're going to have to replot. So, so these, uh, these T cells have a really high expression of CD8. So what we're looking for is a cluster that has really high um, CD8 signature, like this one. And yep, those cells appear over here on our UMAP. So let's go ahead and call that CD8 T cells. And we're going to get hit a gate. All right, so what happened was on our first gate, we started from 10,000 cells and we went down to 7,200 cells. And from this, and from that gate, we went from 7,200 down to 1447 cells. Um, and then if you hit the, hit the download button, you'll get a list that contains both of your gates. Um, and then, so the next example I wanna show is an example of something we call a, a back gate. So right now we are going from antibody space into dimension reduction space. So we thought that um, it would be interesting if we could go from go backwards from dimension reduction space back into the UMAT uh, antibody space. Um, and we envisioned this as more of like a top down type of approach. So, so for example, we can select this cluster of B cells and over an antibody space, it'll show, it'll show up where it is on the heat map. Um, all right, so uh, in addition to gating, um, SiteViz contains uh, more, like more features that allows users to like, um, to holistically evaluate their data. So one of them is uh, the feature co-expression. Because a lot of times we're interested in like um, the relationship between two features expression. Um, so let's go ahead and oh yeah. So for example, um, to show off like the differences in the monocyte cluster, we can Uh, input uh, CD16 and CD19, uh, 14. So, um, so yeah, the, is, in this case, like the more red you are, the more CD16 you have compared to 14, and the more blue you are, the more CD14 you have. And that shows off like in this specific clusters here. And and we also went um like uh we also went multiomic with this as well, so 
Um, if you're interested in like the correlation between the mRNA level and the protein level, then we can go multiomic as well. So, so um, what we're do what we're doing here for the x-axis is CD14 in proteins, and on the y-axis, we're going to the um, mRNA and Here we're seeing like the correlation between mRNA and protein. So let's see. So the more um, so the more red you are, the more uh, CD14 protein you have. Or if you're blue, then the more uh, mRNA CD14 mRNA that you have, and and, and due to the sparsity of like these type of data, we didn't want to help you um, misinterpret your data because if zero is low and one is high, then the color like really exaggerates the difference. So we just made sure to like include the units of expression for both um, scales. Uh, so we don't help you misinterpret your data. And then we have a single single feature expressions as well. These are always fun to play with. So here, let's say I want to really highlight the monocyte population. Um, then it's over here. Or if I want to really show off the CD8 T cells, um, then it's pretty clear that they are here as well. And, and when it comes to quality control of, of your data, one of the most useful feature we, um, we thought to include is to include like common quality control metrics, but split by any categorical data in your SORAT, in your SORAT metadata. So here we have um, RNA, the distribution of counts, um, and then split by you know, the donor, so there were eight patient samples. And is there any confounder? It's like possibly, um, or like unique uh, ADTs per cell. Um, and in this case, it's like, to me, it seems like patient like five to, five to eight may, may be pretty different from like one to four. And do I really believe that? Uh, over on the left, we can just click around, just explore the data a little bit. And so these are patient one to four, and this is eight. So, so yeah, I believe they, they look quite different from each other. So I buy that. Um, and then lastly, there's a clustering page and uh, 3D plots are supported as well, but um, this data set did not include a, three di a third dimension. So, and that's okay. You don't need to go three dimensions sometimes. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so, uh, so I've gone over a, a lot of um, information today, uh, mainly for the gating. We've gone over uh, one layer gates, two layer gates, um, back gates, and how you can use those uh, gating schemes to help in, help your uh, downstream analysis, such as differential expression. Um, and then for feature expression, we have uh, multi-omic co-expression feature plots, as well as um, single expression, and for QC, you can just split common QC metrics by any categorical data in your Surat metadata, as well as a 2 and 3D um, cluster visualization as well. So uh, to, to get um, the code, the data, and the presentation, um, just head on over to the Bioconductor 
like workshops. Um, and then you'll be like linked to to this page. And And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I was I was fortunate to work with like a really fantastic uh, team of scientists. Um, the team at OHSU um, really uh, kind of like defined their need for a certain tool that can help them, you know, explore their data fast faster, and they really um, articulated what they needed. And for the University of Oregon team. Uh, they were the people who really took their requests and really implemented into the package that um, that is CiteVis today. Um, and then, and then uh, for future uh, directions, we plan to submit CiteVis to Bioconductor like within the next month, and for and later in, in, implement like performance patches, long term main, na maintenance as well. And so, yeah, this has been a uh, really fun project, and I really lo I look forward to more of the OHSU and University of Oregon collaborations. Um, so thank you, everybody. Any questions? Just this mic, right? oh, Yeah. So this really is a Blade Runner reference, but can you enhance and then enhance on your gating? Because that is something that flow cytometrists love to do is enhancing on the, on those gating options, right? Is that something available in your app? Uh, it's just zooming in. <laughs> You're just zooming in. Sorry, maybe too old of a reference. <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> and is it agnostic to the feature type you have? So can I actually be gating on the mRNA instead of the antibody signature? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, because um, even though like RNA uh, matrix is really sparse now, we we built CiteVis so that, because it uh, just, 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 just to like accommodate future changes in sequencing technology, we hope that it, it's, it's less sparse. So we did keep that feature in there. But you, you just have to be very careful because the data is very sparse on the, yeah. uh, on the RNA portion. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the labeling and how it would render inside of the plot. And, and yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. great. So um, they, uh, the gating for NK cells and B cells and so forth is a, a cool example, but Early in the presentation, you pre present some sort of more subtle gating from Jason's paper, for example, where um, LMPPs versus MPPs and some relatively more subtle types of, of, of splits. Uh, it wasn't super duper clear to me what the workflow would be for comparing when um, projecting back and forth when your clusters maybe aren't going to be. Uh, as useful in resolving some of these populations. Could you comment on their relative ease or difficulty of doing this in practice with the current workflow? Right, so in this, in this example, <laughs> uh, so in, in this example, we, um, yeah, we, we kind of like selected like um, rather easier cells, you know, that are like fully differentiated to test and and we have been uh i guess like another way is you know take one of those like bone marrow site seek and really try to like start gating on those as well um we just we just didn't have like the time to like be more be more like uh to like dive deeper into those like bone marrow site seek and trying to like reproduce like other people's results or something yeah but with PBMCs, it's like kind of the, the easier, 
level one. <laughs> so there's a, a question from online. Uh, I was wondering if you could save the code to for replicating the same gates with a new data set and for reproducibility. So I, I think you, you have a lot like, of the information stored in that gate object. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the question is oh, if okay. the actual code could be run. Right, right. So, yeah. so that you can like um you know, put in a pipeline or something and make it more reproducible for for a figure of a paper or something. Um, yeah, I think I think you could. Um, I think the human would just have to do the exploration part first, get those parameters. Um, and I guess we don't really have any functions to like help um, to help them in that regards. But that's definitely a cool feature to like implement, though make things a little bit more reproducible. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Thank you. Great work, uh, especially the idea of gating. Uh, it's pretty useful because I've been struggling with not PBMC, but some other cell types uh, where you have to figure out what are the new cell, new combination of you know protein markers which can be useful. So one suggestion would be to really suggest actually at the at the time of gating what protein markers can be useful to really gate against right if if there's new data set you don't really know and basically if you run find all differential marker based on some some clusters and then kind of suggest that these are the potential options which you can gate against that might might improve the you know usefulness of the of the gating strategy because the unique ip of this is method is is gating and I agree with the previous suggestion, like st just concentrating on the protein, uh, it might be downselling a tool because you can actually go into RNA or like peaks where you can get against uh, against uh, much more another kind of as as newer newer technology comes in, you can you can actually get on that. But I also agree with your point that sparsity can be a problem, but it can be user dependent and you can put a warning there. So that can be really useful. Thank you. So it'd be kind of cool if we could like sort like the features by like the amount it contributes to like the UMAP or like the principal component or something. So that way, you know, you don't scroll down to the bottom of the features and be like, oh, yeah, you can already filter things out that way. Thank you for the suggestion. So you touched on something or something was touched on in the process of discussing it. Um, this tool is almost uh, complementary to another goes by the name of SC gate that was published by the Carmona lab and they concentrated almost exclusive, maybe not exclusively, they concentrated heavily upon creating gating models and training them for uh, for splitting into pure and impure cells. And we, we have some experience with it. We would, Eva was pointing out that uh, it's going to be really handy to compare what we get with SiteViz versus SCGate, but it's also going to be tremendously handy to see where the differences are. You know, why does why is it sometimes we get really good results with SCGate in terms of impurity versus not? We know some of it's due to feature contribution. In some data sets, we won't have all of the ADTs that we'd really like to simulate the flow cytometry gating process on something like, say, subpopulations of dendritic cells. So sometimes we'll shim in mRNA features, and then we'll sort of be scratching our heads. Well, you know, where'd this go wrong? It would be wonderful to have the, it would be wonderful to have the ability, like you said, to look at how well or poorly, um, we know that the correlation between ADTs and mRNAs is often often awful, right? We've, we've plotted this for an awful lot of ADTs. So we know that it's really not even second best. It's just one step up from the worst to use uh, to use mRNA instead of an ADT. But sometimes we don't have any option if we want to set up a gate. How soon in the near future do you think it's going to be that there'll be functions to retrieve a gating scheme that the user has set up so that it can be compared against something that was computationally prepared? So almost like uh, being able to like save a so have a profile of like things that you normally go to, like. Uh, the flow geotype is in scheme where you could retrieve it and see what 
<laughs> right, right, right. So, so maybe like, you know, the next time you generate like a similar data set, you can just like plug it in and then, and then just like check your answer again and then see any differences. In, Right, right, right. Oh. I think I think maybe one hiccup would be that the shape of the U map would be different. Um, but well, you can learn you can learn the U map and then project new data into it. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't have to be a show factor. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So that that would be the workaround to it. But yeah, that's a that's a good uh, feature to to include as well because like. No, we, we rarely do things with like just one experiment and done. It's going to be always a series of experiments and improving the re reproducibility and the parameters. So that would be, would be, be would be like good. Sorry, one, one last question. Uh, so about the bag gating now, it, as I think it comes to my mind, but you were selecting a UMAP cluster, right? Can you once you like once you selected what are the group of cells? Can you suggest like a back back staging in a way that what are the gating features you need to use like a most parsimonious way to suggest the biologist like if you want these type of these type of cells you use these uh, combination of features in this way so that you, in in let's say in a real experiment you might get these cells. So I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but most parsimonious group of features which defines the selected group of cells. So it's give you a suggestion uh, in, in the reverse direction. I'm not sure if it's making sense, but uh, it could be a very cool alg algorithmic, algorithmic problem. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's totally a, a good idea to like, um, if, if there was like a, yeah, or or more algorithmically smarter way to like help suggest, like the the features that could differentiate certain clusters, um, and we we haven't really thought that far, <laughs> um, and no, but that that that's a, that's a good. Th these are all good features to like include, and we love to, I know, keep in contact. We, we'll like show you some the new updates or something, but. Thank you for the feature, uh, suggestions. Right, so it's training the decision tree to, or soft decision tree to, for impurity versus purity to maximize the, uh, the discrimination that you would get if you manually tried to set up a gate. That's a little opaque compared to let's draw a circle or, or square around the thing. That's, I mean, that seems like the most powerful way to do it, right? We all want to, a flow data set and have some high dimensional model based clustering spit out what the gate should be. Mm -hmm. That's not how it actually works in, 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 in actual cells that are transitioning to space. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was just agreeing with one, one of the presenters that it, it seems sort of ideal to have both. Um, data driven and also supervised. We refer to it often as semi supervised. If if we didn't know anything, then yeah, we'd want the data to do all the driving. And if we knew everything, then we wouldn't need new data because we'd already know where to drive. But that doesn't describe most research problems. Most research problems are somewhere in the middle. We're kind of trying to figure out how much driving the data should do and how much the experimental experimentalist or domain expert should do. So I'm kind of looking forward to something like SCGate and, and SiteViz meeting in the middle. That's all I was saying, I concur. Um, no, yeah, that, that, that's a good, that's an interesting point of like, uh, I think also like with difficulty with single cells, like when should it be hands-on? Yeah. Versus like unsupervised. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's quite philosophical at this point. Maybe we can. <laughs> but yeah, I totally understand like where you're going at and. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for all the discussion points. Sorry, not to beat this dead horse, but um, 
I think I'm latching on to the same ideas here of our the back getting thing maybe feel uh made me think that you know you could use this for almost like discovery or something like that, biomarker discovery, this kind of thing. Uh back back to the flow cytometry. That'd be awesome. All right. Um okay, thank you. Thank you everybody. <laughs> <laughs>